What is up, down, and sideways, you beautiful individuals? Welcome back to another episode of League Unlocked. Eric and Mark here with you, beauties, and for the many of you who have been saying a prayer for splits, months, years even, for the return of competitiveness across the globe in the LCS, we need best of threes to get there. It sounds like your calls have been answered because summer split this year. Don't even need to wait till 2025. Best of threes are coming to the LCS. I can't believe it. I can't believe that we've made it all the way back around to getting best of threes in the LCS. Blessed Mark Z and the new crew running the LCS, getting this one through, taking a chance on experimenting back with best of threes for the region. I am a mega fan of this move. I think there were, uh, you know, uh, periods of times where I was on board with best of ones in the sense of understanding. Yes, we've had incredible historic struggles at international events to even get out of the best of one type of territory. Let's nail it down. Let's hammer it down here in this situation. Practice these best of ones. Practice being able to come up with some cheese, something fresh on the day. Get it on through. And then not as well, get the added benefit of how quickly that moved along a broadcast day or was supposed to quickly move along a broadcast day until we found our broadcast starting to get hammered down and, and weighed down with a lot of other segments, a lot of other missed time and lost time in certain things. You go now to where we are in the LCS today, where we've had a split, where we rebounded, stopped a lot of that bleeding and viewership, actually gained some viewership for the region in a good positive step forward. Now we have Mark Z and the crew ready to take another risk, ready to take the chance on expanding the broadcast day, expanding how long you're staying with some of these teams, some of these matches in the best of three and roll it on through. And I tell you what, I love it. Obviously still waiting on a whole lot more information, what the schedule is actually going to look like, how many uh, series are you going to do in a day? How many days are the broadcast going to be? Is it on the weekends but for now at the very least we know it's going to be single round robin which means you play every team once in a best of three so even if you 2-0 or 0-2 every single series in the split you're playing bare minimum the same amount of games that you played in spring obviously as soon as you start throwing in some game threes you're going to get more time on the rift so still way less games than the other major regions that are already in best of threes but we're getting in a step in the right direction and I think one of the things that is going to be extremely interesting about the LCS going back to best of threes in this situation is going back to best of threes and assuming we're keeping the live patch situation, this is going to be something that's totally different because you might have teams coming in with totally different strategies on how they want to approach the fact that it is that live patch and there will be things that exist that are broken, that are that hot you know hand of the weekend, that type of thing. And you're going to have them say, all right, we don't want to ban it. We don't believe it's all that strong. Anything like that. Game one, you get obliterated by it. You get that opportunity to make that pivot the next type of situation. Or you could have a team that plays standard. Goes, oh, you know, we think that we can do scaling, whatever. They get beat. Now they go, all right, desperation. We got to force a game three. Let's go with that hot, fresh thing from the patch. These type of situations, I think we can get some interesting angles in the LCS with this best of three and the environment that exists already with the live patch. And how are these pre-recorded drafts going to work in a best of three? All of a sudden, you finish game one, do they immediately go to the back room and say, great, you have three minutes to debrief, and then we got to already record the next draft because... We're going rapid fire pace through this broadcast with not much time in between games. So there's obviously going to be have, have to be some adjustment or change in that regard. And I think that's going to be coming down to a lot of other factors as well. And one of them is I'm hoping there is that preparation on the broadcast side of it to have that side content. We just came off of talking about what things the LCK does right and why they are that forefront leading region growing in viewership consistently to incredible numbers type of thing and one of that is that side content that rolls on through during the broadcast between games between series but in delays all these things you're able to stay as that viewer on that main broadcast I think the LCS when you're looking to make this change best of three it's going to expand it as you mentioned you also have that disruption to what you had established last split with the live patch, the pre-recorded draft situation with the analyst talking it through, 
I don't know if necessarily you're going to be able to do that all the way through a best of three thing. Maybe you got to have a prepared piece of content that you can roll through so you can record the draft in the time that allows the team to do the debrief, get in a draft, all these type of things. There's a lot more specifics that need to be worked through, need to be talked about, and need to be prepared for for the LCS. But needless to say, this move to best of three is going to have a lot of significant changes on the viewing experience. And hands down, the most impressive part of this is how quickly the change was implemented, because I could fully see this being a 2025 thing, but, and this is Travis Gafford, Travis Gafford Industries dropping this knowledge that this is what's happening. Coming in for summer, doing the change between splits is crazy fast and they're obviously listening and experimenting we talked about this when there were all the big changes coming into spring how quickly how willing is riot to adapt and change and it seems pretty quick obviously now with eight teams best of threes become even more palatable because it feels like you have a dig immortals matchup you probably only have one or two of these per week that will be probably big dips in viewership there's enough other teams that have bigger fan bases or interests that you won't have as many duds with only eight squads. Right. It's a lot easier to hold that attention, hold someone, you know, knowing that, okay, well, I'm waiting for Cloud9 FlyQuest game or the 100 Thieves game after this series. And then realizing, well, it's a series now, right? You have to go through those games. It's going to be multiple games. It could be long. It could go all those three games type of thing. Maybe you say, I don't have time for this. I'm going to go play a Valorant match. I'm going to go, you know, get a sandwich, whatever type of thing. And you leave and don't come back to the broadcast. So there is that type of risk, of course. Still, I, this has got to be that type of move that you're taking. And I love to see that, as you mentioned, when we're curious to see how willingly the rest of Riot, not just Mark Z, because we knew that he was going to be motivated. He was going to want to take risks to try and change momentum for the LCS. It was going to be whether Riot was on board, whether everyone else was going to be there, because it wasn't just going to be his decision making that was going to cause these things to happen. So we see that the uh, that he's got the support of the Riot Games backing, that we are able to make changes like this and making these changes significantly fast, as you said, right around the corner into summer. There's no other chance in history that it would have been this soon. It would have been, yep, next year. Two years from now, we're moving to this type of thing. I give it that type of runway room. LCS, it is do or die. We got to keep this momentum moving. We got to keep climbing back into a, a relevant spot in viewership. These are the ch risks that you got to take. And this is just but one check mark on the list for things to hopefully improve the competitiveness globally for the LCS is getting best of threes. They should honestly just be sitting Berserker down and being like, how do we make this region better? Uh, Mr. Berserker, can you make us a list? Number one is probably getting those best of threes. And you want to put down an extra incentive for Cloud9 to change the way that that practice environment had been this last split. You put the extra importance on now you're in these best of series, best of three type of situations. You got to have that preparation, got to have that practice, got to be able to lock in and focus and stay locked in on focus for that amount of time. I know all simple things that you're hearing, uh, you know, out of your out of ear and going, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, it's easy to do that on the one off to focus on it for that whole split, to make that adjustment, to make that change after we've been doing best of ones. This will be significant on the players, on the coaching staff as well. Keep an eye on that as we move through this round robin. It's easier to prove that you are a good and consistent team in best ofs instead of just losing that cheesy throwaway best of one where some pocket pick destroys you. There's less excuses to be had when you have a best of three and there are upsets if you're the better team in the league, you should be winning more games than best of ones when you transition to that best of three scenario. One of the other notes coming into this scheduling is there's allegedly going to be a two-week break in the middle, which we already had, which seemed incredibly random and was just kind of to line up schedules in spring. But in summer, apparently, it's to make room for the eSports World Cup, which Mark, I had basically heard nothing about until very recently, but this is a big, massive event, multiple eSports titles, not just League of Legends that's taking place in Saudi Arabia, which is obviously mired with controversy when it comes to sports and eSports, but 19 of these different esports events, they got $60 million in prize pool across. But outside of that, 
I don't know what's going on. Is, is it teams from multiple regions that are going to be playing League of Legends? If the LCS is making room for this event, that makes me think some LCS teams are going to be playing, right? That's what I'm thinking too, but it's crazy because we've heard absolutely nothing. We've heard nothing about this from the LCS side, nothing about this from Riot Games side. We've heard nothing about this from any of the individual teams or players about this event leaning towards it. So there's a lot of question marks, a lot of unknowns in this territory. As you laid out some of the knowns that we do have about this Esports World Cup, backed by the Saudis, question marks there for a lot of people on whether they want to support that or get behind that type of idea. And I think that's a very individual thing to come to that type of conclusion and understand it i know we had the issue in the past with the lec making a deal in this type of regard with the same type of connections but at the same time realizing that was more so about the lec as an individual league and the position that they had taken on so many other things then mood making that choice different than say right games partnering up and making that type of decision not that that maybe if you're on the on the opposite side of that fence feeling any better about it just the situation of the world that we live in. And the world that we live in is a world where the Saudis can put up a heck of a lot of money because that is some very serious dough up for grabs for all these various esports. And if you are one of these League of Legends guys who have seen salaries, you know, knock down in the last little of bit, and I think, you know, kind of come back to a more reasonable number, you might be looking at that one as a big, big ticket. I, and I don't know if this is going to be the choice, if it's going to be mandatory for Riot, because they're the ones setting up this event, or it sounds like a lot of the prize pool, if you say send Cloud9 as an organization goes, they're choosing what events to take part in. They want to go to a Tekken tournament, they want to do Valorant, they want to do League of Legends, and cumulatively, how well you do at these multiple title events will determine how much money you get. I don't know. It's all complicated. We don't know what any of the scheduling is, but what we do know is they've got two concerts lined up at this massive venue and six drone fireworks. So they're planning the important stuff more so than the actual esports. They got the uh, they got the full lowdown on what to do from the LEC and the LCS studio finals. They figured out. Okay, let's maybe take it up a couple of notches for our event, for our type of show is the angle they're going for. It very much is one of those situations where, again, you just don't know enough to really make a lot of statements, a lot of things about it. We do know that the LCS has allowed for this break in this time period for what it will be. And now there is somewhat of a conversation about, well, there always was going to have to be some type of break. Maybe this just aligns for it in a situation where Riot identifies, OK, if we have to take a break. We'll give a break where a situation that fits not only in the schedule, but hey, this lines up with maybe some of our fans want to be watching other esports and other things that are going to be involved in these type of events, whatever type of thing. Maybe if that's how that plays out. But right now, I think a lot of us are looking at this as a possibility to have some of our teams, some of these organizations entering into this event and what type of participation that will mean. It makes more sense, honestly, if the break is just for viewing experiences because slamming this in the middle of a split even if it's two weeks to fly all the way to Saudi Arabia for some of these LCS teams for an event that has absolutely zero implications on any of the splits or even if you're comparing to the Asian games last year that was a thing of national country pride and the potential for military exemption all this other huge honors that this event will not have so if there are legit orgs going i'd be hesitant to just be kind of throwing a wrench in your entire split and potentially burning out all the players i don't think anybody could ever put this forth as that this is a, a you know we are entering this strictly on a competition point of view we want to get extra practice extra time and these money, types money, of money, money it's that money Everybody knows money makes the, the world go round. Everybody knows money makes you talk, these type of things. And this situation is clearly one of those ones. Any type of participation is going to be about that because it's not like we're going to find out next week. Hey, we're rolling through T1, Gen G, uh, JDG. We're getting all these guys. G2 is going to come on through. It's not going to be MSI Electric Boogaloo number two. That's not what this event is. It's something else. And so that right now, and again, not having any type of you know notification of it. Yes, this LCS change, that's happened pretty darn rapidly right away. 
signing up for an event like this and having teams say, confirm that we are attending, we are going, making those plans and preparations for, that has to be announced much earlier and much more planned than the type of situation that I think we are heading for, if that is the case. Before we dive into best of threes and esports World Cups, we got to sort out some off-season news and rumors because there's some marquee free agents lurking heading into the summer split. Obviously, first and foremost at the top of that table is a guy who we can't believe didn't get a spot in spring, and that is Licorice, who got absolutely hosed because the team he wanted to play for no longer exists, which makes it hard to suit up. But now he's at the forefront of the rumor mill. Obviously, main teams you think would be looking to replace a top laner. I'm seeing him go either Shopify for Fake God or NRG coming in for Dokla. NRG obviously immediately a competitive squad, but I really hope Licorice is finding a team in summer. I think so too, and I, I think that both of those options you're looking at as Shopify um, and talking about NRG, both of them would be significant shakeups for their teams to make this type of move, to make an acquisition of Licorice, someone that, as you mentioned, we did feel was deserving of a starting LCS spot, whether that was gonna be 10 teams or eight teams. We felt like he was someone that had done enough last year, had that rebound, reasserted himself into that LCS meta of what, you know, where you rank as a top laner and found some good success, found traction for those Golden Guardians. <laughs> Off Golden Guardians, that was the organization that was supposed to be here. R.I.P. <laughs> yeah, dipped out of here on your boy Licorice at the last minute situation. Licorice is someone that I think is deserving of that spot, but I got to take a second to check in on the challenger scene because I'm telling you, S-R-T-T-Y, that's my boy, and he is very clearly someone ready for that next step up in competition, next level at the LCS stage. And I think someone, one of these teams has got to take a chance on them. But the problem is, you've already listed out two teams. And I only can tell probably only one of them might, might make a change in that top lane. And that really does limit what options are available here. Especially when you throw in, does anyone want Fudge? Is he just going to be sitting on the Cloud9 bench now for summer being involved with the org? Because that, you're right, that's three top laners that, as much as you want to meme on Fudge, he's still a... Pretty good top later within the LCS. So that's three guys that are teamless right now that deserve starting in the LCS. They're not mutually exclusive things to say that someone like Fudge ran through the rest of his rope, that all of his timeline left with Cloud9, and to say that he is still one of the top level options that you could have at the LCS to operate that top lane, to shut things down to be a stable side of your map here in the LCS. Fudge presents that to a lot of these teams, and I think a lot of them, you could make an argument for making some type of swap. There would be an understanding that it isn't necessarily just an instant upgrade, one-for-one one type of trading up, moving up the power scale type of situation is part of it you're looking at for these LCS teams. But someone like Fudge, SRTTY, Licorice, those are the three that I'm looking at as the number one options that have to be going on that outside looking in for one of these LCS top lane spots. The other big LEC shift changes, we already know Ooh. Carmine Corp, closers coming in to replace Bo. It sounds like upset is pretty much locked in until Callist becomes old enough next year to be their starting AD carry. But outside from that, they're trying Korean top laners, probably trying someone mid. They want a new support. It is a full overhaul over at Carmine Corp. And truthfully, I feel bad for Closer because this dude is going to get flamed to oblivion probably by the fans of K Corp because, well, they've won four games total across two splits. I, I don't think even if we're getting the vintage, the very best, the prime of the prime that we have gotten from Closer, and make no mistake, the prime of the prime that we have seen from Closer, that's a difference maker. That is someone that it's can an MVP change the in the LCS. Someone that could change the fortunes of a Carmine Corp. I don't feel that is the path that we are gonna go down and what we are aiming for because it's not just gonna be about closer and what's going on. We've heard there's also some rumors about what's going on in the mid lane for this team. We've already heard they have had interest, as you mentioned, Korean top laners. They were in on trying to get in on Thanatos away from D plus Kia, your boys Cloud9. Jack offering a little bit more of a bag, a little bit better of a landing spot type of situation. Now we're here with Carmine Corp. And as you mentioned, closer coming in, I think number one for him, 
Pappy, good to see Closer back in a situation. I think that he is someone that I, I, I didn't like the way things ended out with him with 100 Thieves and what he could offer for it. I think this is absolutely a good spot to get that bounce back in your career because you got a lot of positive upside available to you. Now, are you going to achieve any of it with all the other things around you? That is really going to be the question for me because I am not uh, by any means enthused by hearing about upset continuing to stay with the team in that type of regard. I don't think that he has necessarily been anywhere close to the name that he established for himself in his career or what is necessary at this LEC level right now. And the real sad part here is it sounds like Bo is going to be teamless for the summer split, which... I was eyeing Giant X maybe as a potential landing spot for him. Obviously, I'd love to see him with... It feels like we've already given him a fresh start, but I'm, I'm still a sucker. I still think the potential is there for this guy. I think I think the potential, I think the talent is so clearly still there for a player like Bo. It's all about the other factors that play into whether you are getting that potential out of the individual or if that individual can even get a chance to show you that potential type of situation. I don't think any of these ones that Bo really has been on outside of uh, maybe the odd two, three weeks back on Vitality situation where it was able to work out. Now we are going to basically run through the LDC portion of what we have had from Bo. And I think it has been massively underutilized by the league. Lastly, LPL, roster rumor, Weibo Gaming. It ain't the shy, but the new top side potentially coming in for summer. Breathe and Tarzan returning. Is that at least a top four team now? Well, when you talk about what's happening for Weibo Gaming, the first thing I'm checking is, well, are you telling me that the shy is coming back? That's the number one thing. And then number two is almost an immediate dejection, no, okay situation. But you're telling me you're slotting in Breathe. And you're, we've seen a little bit of that bounce back, but still some of that mojo that Breathe has had with RNG over these last little bit uh, of time. And then you're saying that Tarzan is going to come into the jungle and really change things forward, be that spark plug for Weibo. I'm on board. I'm on board. I'm with this ship and I'm captaining it. Now, am I going to captain this ship? in a race against your likes of the top esports uh, speedboats or the BLG Super Cruiser, I don't expect it to be necessarily enough to push him over the top of the LPO. Mark it in another World Finals for this Weibo Gaming roster. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you, Beauty. Thanks for hanging out, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.